a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries and recent observations from the NASA's Lucy mission. The mission that recently sent us back this, the first ever footage of a somewhat mysterious asteroid with a proper name. It's actually known as Donald Johansson. Named after a paleontologist who officially discovered the famous fossil known as Lucy, representing the first nearly complete species of a hominin known as Australopithecus, which back then, in the early 70s, allowed the scientists to finally answer a lot of questions about human evolution. And because in this case this probe is trying to answer questions about the evolution of the solar system, it too received the name Lucy as a kind of a play on words. And it just so happens that the second asteroid it visited is named after that famous paleontologist. Now one of the videos in the description discusses this mission in more detail, including its eventual purpose, but in a nutshell this NASA space probe is currently on its 12 year long adventure. It already stopped by two asteroids, but now it's going to be going to Jupiter and for the first time ever is going to be transmitting images of the mysterious Jupiter's Trojans. Or basically these massive asteroids stuck in Jupiter's orbit as a result of the gravitational interaction with Jupiter that creates these very stable gravitational points known as L4 and L5 that can easily trap a lot of asteroids for millions of years. But even now, after these two visitations, Lucy has already discovered a few mysteries and has made a few super unexpected discoveries that we're going to be discussing in this video. Oh, and by the way, here are actually the objects it's going to be visiting in the next few years. But the recent stop was around this super small object you see right there, 52246 Donald Johansson. The asteroid that always appeared a little bit unusual and somewhat different from a lot of other known asteroids, mostly because it possessed an extremely slow rotation. This was based on a lot of observations using radio telescopes and specifically radar telescopes and more recently using optical observations. And here it was discovered that this asteroid seems to possess an extremely unusual variable brightness. Suggesting that it's maybe either a binary body containing two asteroids or possibly just an extremely long object, sort of like what was suggested about Oumuamua a few years back. If you remember, it was supposed to look something like this. And so here Donald Johansson was super exciting simply because it might be something similar, it might be this very bizarre cigar shaped object or maybe some kind of a bizarre binary we've never seen before. And surprisingly, when the researchers received the first images, the solution to this mystery turned out to be maybe a bit of both. This turned out to be both a long object and a really bizarre binary. But first, it's actually important to understand why this mission is so impressive in terms of its technical capabilities. And here this mission is almost entirely automated. In other words, the entire process here was basically autonomous. Here the instruments used the orbital data from previous observations and were then able to automatically activate and point in the exact direction without the guidance from anyone from NASA. Basically here this entire encounter was completely automated based on the asteroid's position. And because this flyby was extremely quick, here this craft was moving at 13 kilometers per second and this asteroid is only about 8 kilometers across, all of this had to be done super quickly and very precisely and only lasted less than a second. As a matter of fact, these images you see, this was collected from a distance of about a thousand kilometers, moving at 13.4 kilometers per second. And so the actual automation process and the precision of the orbit and of course the precision of instruments is absolutely mind-blowing. Especially because the images in this case were almost perfect. But here's why these images are surprising and here's what the scientists discovered by observing the surface. This is technically a binary, but more specifically it's known as a contact binary, a type of an asteroid where basically you have these two objects that eventually join together through an extremely slow collision. And this was completely unexpected, but surprisingly completely unexpected just like with a lot of previous encounters with similar objects. As a matter of fact, one of the first surprising discoveries, super intriguing contact binaries, was right here. This was from the New Horizons mission and this object is known as Arakoth. You can check out more about this in the video in the description. But something very similar was observed during the Rosetta mission and the Comet 67P and actually so many other objects, so many other asteroids including Itokawa, but much more intriguingly, even the previous visitation or the previous asteroid visited by Lucy. Here this was actually the first stop back in 2023 and the asteroid known as Dinkinesh. The pictures from this asteroid were captured back in November of 2023 
And here during the flyby, the first surprise was that Din Kinesh contained the moon, but the second more unusual surprise was that the moon itself was a contact binary. Something that was officially confirmed in several studies in the last few months. And here this new moon, known as Selam, was completely unexpected and was totally bizarre. And bizarre because just a few years back, it was actually believed that these contact binaries are maybe a little bit rare. It was expected to happen sometimes, but not as many times as we seem to find them with all of the different missions. And just like that, we get another contact binary, literally around the second object visited by Lucy. Which now seems to confirm a slightly older hypothesis in regards to these contact binaries potentially being super super common in the entire solar system. And so basically, even though we thought they were rare, it seems to be quite the opposite. And so what exactly happens here, and how exactly do they form? Well, they're called contact binaries, because this is two objects touching. And based on different models and different simulations, they have to touch really slowly. A typical impact velocity here would be maybe about 50 millimeters per second. So basically just a gentle touch. And then following this really gentle collision, these objects basically join together and sometimes end up forming a much larger shape that makes them look super long. Sort of resembling a typical peanut. And these peanut shaped asteroids have been discovered in a lot of different places. But we actually didn't even know they existed until some of the earliest observations from Jupiter. And the original explanation was actually used for Jupiter's Trojan, Hector, another somewhat lone object that back in 1971 was explained to be maybe a binary that became a single object. Unfortunately, Lucy is not visiting this object. So we're not going to know for sure. But the question was of course, why exactly does this happen and what's responsible for their formation? And here the answer lies in our sun. Here there are two very specific effects that kind of work in a very similar way, known as the Yarkovsky effect and the yarkovsky okeefe radzievsky paddock effect, also known as YORP. Both of these effects are related to thermal radiation from celestial objects, or essentially emissions from these objects caused by the heating from the sun, but they do have slightly different consequences. For Yarkovsky effect, it actually changes the orbit. Usually the result of the thermal radiation from the sun pushing on the object over time. In contrast, Europe effect affects the orbital spin of the object and the orientation of the axes. In other words, the radiation from the sun, as it affects different parts of the object slightly differently, with time causes the asteroid, or really any object, to rotate either faster or slower, and sometimes even changing the direction of spin. And so, as a result of this Europe effect, many asteroids basically end up spinning so fast that they eventually fall apart. Or they form binary asteroid systems. In pretty much every single case, it was basically the result of the Europe effect. This is also true for a lot of different asteroids that contain moons, which are usually just the result of something from the surface eventually kind of escaping as a result of the fast spin and eventually forming the moon around the asteroid. For example, Didymus and Dimorphos, which was part of the DART mission, extremely likely formed this way. And for a typical medium-sized asteroid, Europe effect usually has time scales of about 1000 to maybe 10,000 years. So basically within a few thousand years, an asteroid can accelerate so much that it then kind of falls apart creating two asteroids or in some cases, can actually also start changing the orbits of asteroids until they finally come closer and closer together and then merge forming a contact binary. In other words, a typical contact binary might actually be the result of a multi-step process formed from a previously larger asteroid that basically falls apart and then recombines, forming this somewhat bizarre peanut shape. But according to the same hypothesis, this can actually have a kind of a cycle, Basically, this bizarre fissioning and re-impacting can actually happen over and over and over again. Eventually changing the shape of the asteroid so much and reshuffling the material so much that it always seems to appear to be more or less brand new, only a few thousand years old just because the material on the surface changed so much. And some of the previous analysis from 2019 focused on 191 nearby asteroids, specifically near-Earth asteroids, and use the data from now defunct Arecibo Observatory to confirm that at least 30% of all asteroids near Earth, the ones larger than about 200 meters, appear to be contact binaries. This was way way higher than the previous assumption of just 10%. Moreover, when scientists used observations from farther away in the solar system, and when they focused on trans-Neptunian objects, so basically objects like Arakoth, they discovered this percentage to be closer to 
50. So half of all objects on the outskirts appear to be contact binaries too. And this was true for objects as large as 500 kilometers across. Very often with similar shapes to what you see right here, resembling these super strange snowmen. And that's of course something that we actually never knew before and something that's coming to us as a complete surprise based on these new observations and these new missions. With Lucy once again confirming that this asteroid seems to be another such object. In this case, a rocky, carbon-rich contact binary, but also a binary that contains quite a few craters on its surface, suggesting that it possibly existed for at least a few million years. But based on its orbit, we also know that it's part of a much larger family. It actually seems to be connected to a family of asteroids known as Erigone asteroids, with all of them potentially forming as a result of a massive collision 200 million years ago. Here this is a pretty large family containing over 1700 members. But because in this case this is a really massive object, at least 8 kilometers in size and spinning very very slow, it's unlikely to change anytime soon. And it's actually probably going to maintain its unusual peanut shape for as long as it exists. Unless of course something else collides with it, reshaping it once again. But now the new question is, okay so of 6 different Trojans Lucy is going to be visiting, how many of them are going to be contact binaries too? It's going to be visiting these six objects starting in August of 2027, and right now only two seem to resemble basically potatoes. But none of them are assumed to be contact binaries. Yet based on these new observations and a lot of this new analysis, chances are that actually most of them might end up being something similar. Which might completely change our understanding of the solar system and potentially present us with a lot of new mysteries. But right now we don't really have any other answers. Although luckily for us, Lucy has proven to be an exceptionally successful probe. Able to do everything autonomously, but more importantly even demonstrating that it's able to update its own knowledge of different asteroids and their orbits, and then reposition itself and its instruments as needed. And so this mission almost doesn't actually need any controls, it can do everything itself. Naturally though, until 2027, we're probably not going to hear much about this, simply because it's going to be traveling through relatively empty space. But we'll definitely come back and discuss this more somewhere around August of 2027. On that note, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.